that, and then later on playing it back, I thought I handled the thing quite well. And then when you play it back, you, you, you hear yourself and how you handle it. You find out that you it didn't handle it near as well as you thought. Oh, I was that. So, so often that happens, Doctor. With me, it happens even today. I, I listen to a tape and I say, why, Dave Elman, you darn fool, why didn't you go into this phase of it at that point instead of that? Where was your mind? We're not perfect human beings, Doctor. Don't expect yeah, perfection. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's a good idea. Why you, can, uh, you can approach it from the other angle. Dr. Waxman, how would you grade yourself? Well, I've, I've tried uh, the uh, hypnosis attached to sleep, oh, I would say six or seven, possibly eight times in the last two weeks. And uh, I don't seem to get very far with it. Uh, I have the patient into uh, what I consider fairly deep somnambulism where I get the uh, amnesia uh, during, the, uh, during the relaxation and after I bring them out. And uh, still, uh, when uh, I give them the signal for sleep, signal that I had told them I would give them, uh, they don't sleep. Uh, they they get drowsy. Their eyes close. <clears throat> they seem to be asleep, looking at them. No. But the breathing has got uh, decreased. You wait until that breathing gets down to about six. So well, I've waited for five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. I'll five show it to you today. Minutes. I'll show it to you today again because I think that uh, you, you should now, have. One, one thing I wondered, uh, Dave, on this. Uh, do I get them really out of the somnambulism before I get them into that? I, I have no way of knowing if I really have them out of the somnambulism. Why not? Why not? There's, there's when I tell once, them not, now you open it. All right. suggestions will be gone except for one suggestion which I have planted there. Mm -hmm. And you will have no conscious recollection of any of the suggestions I have given to you. But all will be gone except that one suggestion that when I snap my fingers or when I pull my ear or or reach for something, I don't know, reach for water or go to the sink to wash my hands or something. I don't know how you would use it in, in yeah. dentistry, but whatever. Well, I have a little uh, uh, medicament bottle on the, uh, on the tray at home, and I raise that and shake it and put it back down on the tray that they'll, they'll become drowsy. They'll go to sleep into a deep sleep. It's not anything like they were in before. But same way as they sleep at night, mm -hmm. so they went yeah. deeper than they ever had slept before. And, uh, and then I tell them now when I have you open your eyes, you feel better than you have all. Your only mistake all is much deeper than you've ever slept before. Don't ever say that. The same deep sleep that you have at night. And that's all. It'll be a normal, natural sleep. Don't make it deeper. Then they wonder if they can reach a deeper sleep than they ever, because every person has slept very deeply in his, his or her lifetime. It's the one mistake that you make. I wouldn't use that line. That's the only mistake I can see that you're making that would keep you from getting it. I don't know if that's well, enough of a mistake to keep you from getting it, Doctor. You want to... Can't you just tell them to go to sleep without uh, giving them a cue? Sure you can. And in just a moment, uh, you just close your eyes and go into the brain. Um, yeah. I find that, that being on the receiving end of that, I found it less embarrassing. Here is a fellow clicking his watch or putting his hand up or something. I seem to have a resistance to want to follow that cue. But if he just tells me to go on to sleep, I can accept that easier. Yeah, but if you don't remember it, Doctor, that, then uh, then it doesn't act at, uh, at conscious well, I level. I seem to be able to remember it, that cue. Well, then if you can... I'm supposed to go to sleep when he does certain things. And no, then, then that's not it. You've got to get some ambulism for and after, and then they won't remember the suggestion <laughs> at all. Let, let's find out, uh, 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 other words, how are you doing in, in uh, 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 first, remember, I'm going around here trying to get the idea of whether you feel that you have been able to absorb the knowledge and put it to use and where you would grade yourself. So that's, that's what I'm asking now, and, and two men well, haven't graded themselves. Where would you grade yourself, Doctor? Well, I think 85. About 85. Well, where, where would you grade yourself, Doctor? Oh, probably around uh, 70 or 75. Mm -hmm. I've had very good result with post-operative suggestion, pre-operative suggestion, but as far as getting good anesthesia for extraction, uh, like that, I Then you haven't been doing right. You know what you've been doing? You've been putting doubts into their own mind instead of giving them the suggestion so that there are no doubts. 
and I know what you've done in, uh, that's, that's wrong, and I know how to correct it. Don't give your suggestions in such a way that imply doubt or give them doubt that it's going to happen. Now, so many people, despite the fact that they take this course, revert to the old-fashioned methods of giving anesthesia. Now, let me tell you how they do it. Now your jaw is getting number and number and number and number, and this whole area is getting number and number and number, and the person isn't feeling any numbness, and doubts creep into his mind, and he's not getting anesthesia at all. It's much easier to say, now well, you won't feel anything. Now go to work. There is room for doubt. Doubt can creep in, and you, you go to work on it. And if at any time, you're working with them. You don't keep saying, are you feeling this? Are, because sure, they're feeling that you're working there, but they're not feeling... Look, I'll tell you something, gentlemen. I didn't... I hadn't meant to tell this today, but, but I will tell it to you. I had a carcinoma removed from my uh, side of my head just uh, less than eight days ago. And I've got to go to Oklahoma City for further treatment on it. I had it removed through auto-suggestion. That is, I gave myself anesthesia by means of auto-suggestion. He, he suggested that he numb the area before uh, removing this thing. I didn't want anesthesia. I said, look, you can't give me anesthesia as good as I can give myself, so, so why worry about it? You just tell me, just keep me apprised of what you're doing. Don't take me by surprise and you'll find that I have better anesthesia than you can get with, any, with anything that you might use for that area. And so help me, I didn't feel a thing while he was cutting, and he had to go pretty deep for it. Uh, he excised it, uh, and he, he suspected what the thing was, and the biopsy showed that he was right. I didn't feel it. Now, I didn't allow doubts to creep into my mind, and I know why I had the anesthesia. Because I said to myself, look, Dave, you can either feel this thing or not feel it, just as you prefer. Now, what do you want to do? You want to feel it? Then go up there and be awfully scared, and you'll feel it terribly. Instead of that, give yourself the suggestion <coughs> that you're not going to feel it. And, Doctor, I could feel him working there, but I could not feel what he was doing. That's to get over the point of why you're not getting perfect anesthesia, because by this time you should be able to do extractions without the least bit of discomfort using the techniques I have showed you. You can do it in the coma, have you tried doing an extraction in the coma? You'll find they don't, don't even feel it. You don't even have to suggest anything. <coughs> it's there. You're working with your elevators anyhow and that sort of thing. You can test by the time you're using the elevators. They'll tell you whether they have any feeling or not. Stay relaxed like that and you won't feel anything. Uh, doctor, where would you grade yourself? Well, on uh, absorbing the essence of the knowledge, I'm absorbing the failure. That's something I, I, I can't understand. It, apparently, you are not getting your suggestions across. And, and what to tell you to do further than what I told Dr. Waxman, I don't know. You've just got to be so sure of yourself that you make them feel that they're not going to feel anything. And you don't do it the hard way. You do it at all times the easy way. I think one reason is that I've never been able to obtain anesthesia. Mm -hmm. It that could be it. That, that could be it. Could be it. Uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that because I, I hope. Are you getting better as, as we go along? Do you feel yourself getting better? No, I, I don't. I haven't been able to get absolute anesthesia at any time. Have you taken them down to the coma and seen how the automatic anesthesia occurs? They don't feel not if you've got the coma, doctor. There's a person in the world who can feel anything when you've got the coma. That I, I can't understand. Doctor, how are you doing? Yes, I'm talking. Um, I'm quite happy. About uh, oh, I, 85 percent of the children left on selected children. I like my approach to brand a lot better than yours. I beg pardon. I like my approach to what brand is it? better than yours. Hold them and give it to them. Forget it. Oh, no. They're going to scream anyhow. 
<laughs> no, no, I don't like that because that's that's traumatic. That's if traumatic. It may be traumatic, but at the pace at which I have to work, I can't afford this. Thing. Dr. Phillips on the fact that that the uh, horse shot business on the child is awfully traumatic and makes of them an awfully bad patient in years to come and and very fearful of any pain impulse no matter what it is from that time on. Well, uh, if you could we're see not this here in to debate the uh, relative merits of my technique or not no. my technique, we're here. Uh, no, I know. Uh, I'm just. I'm trying to give you a frank answer. Yeah, I know, and I'm trying to. I'm, I'm trying to give you a, a, an answer, because I know darn well you've been a good student, and I'm and I appreciate good students. I'm just giving you what my opinion has been after working with so many people that when you see them with their traumas, and you see where the birth of the trauma is, and you say to yourself, if only a little explanation had been given to that child, maybe. You wouldn't have the trauma. Well, again, let's take it a step back. If the parents had been adequately and adequately trained in the handling of their young, they would not have parents. Oh. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yes, exactly. yes. I, 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 you can take that back three or four generations, Doctor. <laughs> well, no, I think we go back, Doctor, about two. At which time, we're trying to reason with individuals who did not have the use of reason i.e. children, that uh, very, very few, Dr. Phillips' age, my age, your age, uh, psychology was unknown. Uh, the psychology was what we learned from mother and dad. They're, they told us. We were able to impart it to our children, but the generation that was raised without self-discipline not knowing discipline, cannot teach it. That's right. And I do not have the time nor the desire to be a one-man missionary to start from scratch and go the other way. No. Well, look, I, I, I appreciate the report. As far as children's concerned, I'm not in that business a great deal, but I, I uh, somehow or another handle them very well. 
very much, very well. And I'm sorry to say that uh, I can use this quadruped uh, child that's had a shot from the pediatrician before they get into the office. <laughs> they must have a bell plan. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> I guess I familiarize myself a little more with the child. It doesn't take the, uh, very much uh, trouble. In fact, I get them so, and it seems that if I don't give them a kick in the pants someplace along the line, they think that I'm mad at them. And I go out in the room. If they're sitting there, I wave at them. Maybe walk up and kick them on the bottom of the shoe. They all like it. I'm a kid along the middle. When I come in, I, I, a lot of times I have them that are very sick with severe tonsillitis, temperature, and treatment. I don't have any trouble getting an injection. I don't have a sporting kid before or after. Mm -hmm. That is practically most of it, it's waiting in most. I don't do much except just uh, tell them I'm going to put something on there that make it numb. And that's my antiseptic solution. I use uh, not alcohol because everybody knows what alcohol is and smell. I use uh, light naphthol, it's a good antiseptic, and they don't they smell it as something they're not used to. And it is to them something that severely produces a numbness. And uh, I tell them how well they'll be tomorrow, and how they'll be better than they I have a friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't uh, take me long to have them. I don't have any uh, health plan of children, but uh, however, I. I have had uh, children that uh, with uh, cut lips, these are the lips taken out, see the teeth, and put them up on the table, and talk to them a moment or two, and tell them as long as they keep their eyes for the plate like that they can't open. I call it my plate like system. But they're just barely closed. I get a great deal of satisfaction out of that barely keeping the eyes closed because that gives them something to concentrate on. And play like that you can't close the eyes, or that you can't open the eyes. As long as you do that, you won't feel anything. And I never tell them. I put a stitch in a uh, lip, for instance, and tell them that I'm going to pinch it. And that's my stitch. And they don't bother me. Mm -hmm. And it's a great deal of pleasure to have some four-year-old kid get up off the table and say thank you, doctor, instead of yelling at you. Mm -hmm. And I do have that kind of mm -hmm. give the children. We have a video of traumatic uh, conditions in children. I reported some of that work and uh, the technique that I used at, uh, last year in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I saw your name listed there. Uh, Dr. Plinus, how would you say you're doing? Any improvement over the past year? Um, by sitting in the second time, I've learned immensely more. Mm -hmm. uh, things that, uh, for instance, you mentioned that uh, about menstruation. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot that in the first session. Uh, and then it dawned on me to try it, and this time I did. And I gave waking hypnosis to a woman whose daughter I had delivered uh, with hypnosis. And this mother said, no, I am, I don't want any hypnosis. And I said, well, just for the matter of record, then <clears throat> say that we'll have your period appear at uh, 7 o'clock the next morning. You go along with that, won't you? And she laughed at me, they're all right. So I saw her a week later, and she said, you were off an hour, doctor. You said it would be at 6 o'clock, and it was at 7. <laughs> and I had notated on my chart 7 a.m., and I showed it to her, and she was amazed. Yeah. But it was an entirely waking suggestion, just positive uh, talking. Dr. Flatus brought to us... I was really amazed, because yeah. that's the first time I tried it. Dr. Flatus brought to us a tape recording <clears throat> about six or eight weeks ago. I don't know how many of the men heard it which was an amazing 
demonstration to me of how an apt student can use hypnosis wisely and well. The man was hemorrhaging and hemorrhaging badly and Dr. Thetis turned on the tape recorder and uh, using waking hypnosis at all, only, no trance state at all, stopped the hemorrhage like that. Isn't that right? Right? Yeah. No. Right? No. 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 He had a turkey's towel just saturated with him. Yeah. Yeah. No. And yeah. his mother had told him if you bleed out of both sides of the nose, you're gone. Yeah. And he started doing just that. Yeah. So right then, he was panicky enough that I said, well, just relax. And all I did was put a cotton applicator with this little cotton in the nostril. And immediately the bleeding stopped. Yeah. He said, it stopped, Dr. I said, yes, it has. He wants to know what that magic medicine is so he can keep it around the Andy all the time. <laughs> well, I've, I've done that with hemorrhaging also with waking hypnosis and, and the, all the people who call me on the phone and uh, they're hemorrhaging after an extraction and uh, just through waking hypnosis I'm able to stop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can do it over the phone? Yeah. Sure. Dave? How do you suggest uh, if uh, they want to know what that magic medicine is? In other words, if you do something like that, do you tell them later that what you did? No, I just say it's something that's not available. That's all. But you would not no, tell it's them just know a, that you use this? No. Test. Well, I, I wouldn't, uh, in a case like Dr. Linus, why, why should he tell them uh, what it is? Yeah. Right. He's yeah, been yeah. led to this day, but he, he's afraid he is going to. Yeah, well, he won't blow his nose even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a hypochondriac extreme. And I'd like to know how I could really... Get no analysis, Doctor. That's all. If I know where it started. I can't get him to uh, sit still quite uh, long enough. He's, he wants to tell me all his symptoms instead of listening to me. Yeah. Well, uh, look. <laughs> if that happens, there's much I can do about it. Yep. Let's get over and... Uh, oh, Dr. Audio, uh, I haven't had a report on you the past year. How are you doing? Oh, I have improved a great deal since last time. I also stopped a very bad thing the other night. I even called off for business. Yo, <laughs> do you, I didn't hear that. I even called off for business to uh, get some information about something. Yeah. About and he told me that I could uh, stop it with consciousness. But... I really didn't know if the man was going to take it or not. But he took it very well and that was it. Yeah. See, it wasn't my patient to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if I was going. Yeah. And I have improved a great, great deal. I'm pretty sure of myself now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really have benefited. Yeah. Well, I'm glad of that. Let's get over on this side. Now, how are you doing, Doctor? I think uh, as to the retention of uh, <coughs> information is very satisfactory. As far as application, I would mean, give myself an F. But, uh, I didn't hear that last. I would give myself an F at the present time. You're an ENT, isn't that right? Yes. Uh, I wonder if you'd like any reaction to a couple of the ideas expressed. No. Uh, I don't know. It takes more than one bird and one swallow to make a summer. And one nosebleed uh, that stops in the middle of the night doesn't prove anything. <coughs> there have been nosebleeds from time immemorial that uh, quit and the patient lived without anybody stopping. It's hypnotic, okay. hypnosis or not. And there have been cases that led to death. Uh, if I have a notice, please, I want to see it. it uh, I want to preach it in the when I do it to the face as well as over the telephone. If I have a tonsil bleeding, it's my responsibility to see that throat. And if I were a dentist and had a socket bleeding, it's my responsibility to see that socket and not sing a song over the telephone. I, I think if a person loses a patient that way, it's, it's indispensable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, 
I think you have a very good point there when uh, when there's any uh, hemorrhaging to the extent that would indicate that a death might be imminent. I don't I don't think I, I have no knowledge of medicine in that. Uh, it's a uh, tooth bleeding or if it's a uh, pencil case, then the hypnotizer would be one of the uh, RCA case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, uh, an interesting viewpoint, and I think that the doctors can be well guided by it. Doctor, how would you grade yourself? Well, I think I understand the uh, essentials pretty well. Um, However, when it comes to applying it, I'm not entirely satisfied. As far as children is concerned, I think I've been uh, a uniform failure. When I say I have failed, I mean those cases that I would like to control, uh, I have failed uniformly. Uh, the pay, the are you talking about the brats now, are you? Yeah, the little kids that uh, it works on, I think I've had good rapport with them and would have worked gotten along with it very well anyway without hypnosis. Well, then hypnosis is no value right. uh, in those cases. Have but you the, used the top trick? Sir? Have you used the top trick? Once or twice. Just because it does work well once or twice, doctor, if, if but we'll say that you gave a person a penicillin shot and he might have a reaction to it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't stop <clears throat> using penicillin on others. But if you would figure hypnosis the same way, you may not get a result on this kid. But you might get a result on the next ten brats. So just because it didn't work on one, you wouldn't stop using aspirin or any anything just because it didn't help one person. Uh, figure it the same way with hypnosis. You might uh, well say to yourself, uh, I've got ten brats here in my practice. Ten kids I would like to help. Well, I tried it on one, I tried it on two, and it didn't work. So you don't use it on the other eight. And you might find it would work on all the other eight. Try the other eight. See what happens. And I would try the top trick. I would say I, I would I would use so I would go back, look over the outline. If you've got a tape, play the tape. Or you you do have a record, anyhow. Go to procedure record number two. Play that thing over again so that you know your procedure well. Then try it, and you might be very well surprised how successful you will be with brass. How many of you have made the top trick work? <coughs> you have, Doctor Flitters, but that's the only one in the room. Well, that's about the top trick. Yeah. We'll use um, without anything except little kids that's trying to yell or something, just start the top going, give them the injection. You don't have to tell them to go to sleep. Well, as long as he's watching it, things work pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I never knew that. Yeah. Right. So now you're telling me something new. Did you ever try that, Doctor? Yeah. It's a distraction. Well, I think I yeah. <laughs> Mr. McGee, who gives most of the shots in my office, I thought, getting that top one day to use on a how was that kid, Bill? I don't know, seven months ago? Yeah, about seven months ago. And uh, I said, well, you can't use that on him. So he just started the top spin and gave the shot. The kid didn't do anything. He just watched the top. Yeah. It's an interesting yeah. thing. You might try it. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Did, did you try it? Yes, it works. It does work, huh? Without even saying without, without saying anything. Without saying anything. I didn't know that. Now well, you see, you know, I know it's not. watch it, but if you don't go to sleep, I think you have to hold their arm. You have to hold your alcoholic compress on the arm at the time, within the tongue. Then they're used to your sensation being on their arm. And then they watch the thing. But if you then watch the top and then you bring in the alcohol and swab, then their attention is directed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, but be ready. Apparently, apparently you met or discovered something there that I didn't know. Yes, sir. Uh, just with uh, adults, my uh, uh, successes have been much better, and I think I've been able to do a lot of remarkable things. I've been quite discouraged from uh, by several classes of patients. I think one of them is the resistant type that don't uh, go under at all, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sort of uh, this has been more so. I think of the older age group, and I rationalize by saying, well, they're more set in their ways. They're more rigid mentally, and uh, they just don't respond. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been sort of reminiscent of the negativistic child, the kind of child that his mama says white, the child says black, if daddy says stay, the child's got to say night. For no reason at all except that they have to express their independence. 